it's eight o'clock. So, la la la. Dee -dee -dee. We are going to do today's session on the mat. No standing, lying down. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that is what we're going to do. Um, bridges, side planks, Ooh. or side bridges, because we don't like the word plank. Makes you feel like you're a plank of wood. You don't move, <laughs> but you do. Um, yeah. Um, and then on all fours from child's pose, going into fork forwards and backwards, so rocking child's pose, moving child's pose, but more to do with the um, abdominals, joining in. Hmm. Yeah, and then we'll do our little cross crawling, maybe on the back. But I was reading something from this today, anatomy trains, so there's a huge body and study of work from Thomas Myers about um, the lines of the body, how it's all connected. Morning. And I was just reading all the different lines that I talk about. a story that he was uh, he was told from his um, from Moshe Feldenkrais um, who deals with somatics and uh, slowing down the movement which is kind of what we're doing in the sense of Pilates the really slow movement sessions that I'm starting to teach okay so um, so this chap who yeah, Feldenkrais is the movement man, he's like he's thought about how he works more with the brain and neurologically how the brain works and how the body works, the mind can and the body can connecting. And very much from, from a developmental point of view when we when we're babies, um, when we're babies and how when we're babies the development stages that we have, Highlander. Um, and how these stages affect us as we as we're older. And if we miss any of these stages of our development, it affects our movement when we're older. So if your parents are still around, ask them if you took a long time to walk. Uh, that's okay, Linda, I'm just chatting. And if we took a long time to, um, to crawl, or if we were quick walkers, if we got up quickly and started walking about quickly, we might have missed a stage of development, of walk coming over onto our hands, of, you know, when we're touching our hands and our feet together and going from crawling, what our crawling was like, and there's this, sort of this thing, well, there was, I'm not sure if it is the thing now, about these mothers asking each other how quickly their children learn to walk. It's kind of like a, a thing amongst some of the mothers and maybe in more, it's in, maybe more in London, it's a fashionable thing. Oh, my child walked first. It's not an achievement, really. Your, your child will walk when it's ready. It's not like you want to pick it up and try and drag it along. Quick, quick, quick. The neighbour's child's walking when you're not. Sort it out. <laughs> so there's this um, uh, in Bali. Uh, this this lady um, was asking um, Feldenkrais um, a question. So I've been meaning to ask you, why can't the Balinese men learn to hop? Um, they're good dancers. Very well coordinated, but this this lady was also a movement teacher, and she said, "I cannot teach them to hop from one leg to the other," at which Ferdinand Christ said to her, "It's because it sounds like they're missing a stage of creeping, um, and creeping is that the, the Balinese don't let their babies touch the ground for the first seven months, which they call a rice year, the first seven months. So they never get to creep on their bellies, which is when they if you've ever seen a baby on their on their front and they pull themselves forward, so they're not allowed to do that." Um, in the first um, seven months. They don't let their babies touch the ground for the first seven months. So they miss that stage of development and uh, that movement where they're moving from one hand to the other and they're pulling themselves up and which doesn't develop their hips. So um, they're barely across the floor for about six months or so and you will see the underlying movement for transferring the weight from foot to foot and thus hopping. So when you see a baby do that, if you lay on the floor on your belly and you're trying to push yourself forward, you would use the sole, you would use your foot, your toes would be under like that, and you push yourself forward. And because they uh, they stop their babies doing that in the first seven months, they kind of then it transfers in their brain, that part of their brain doesn't develop, so they can't hop when that order. 
Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of what we're doing with every movement that I teach. We're talking about why some movements are easier than others. Um, sometimes it's to do with your posture type, your arched, your back. You might have a tucked up, tucked under position with your back, might have a straighter spine, shoulders, neck, jaw, feet. Um, isn't always because you feel like, oh, I've been sitting at my computer for years. <laughs> what happened to you when you were younger in the developmental stages of your life? Interesting, yeah? So let's lie down because we're going to do this on our um, on the mat today. So lying down on your back, we're going to start with bridges, but we're going to obviously work a bit of breathing first to get the abdominals working and mobilise the spine. So you're lying on your back and your feet are bent. Um, we're going to do bridges to start and then we're going to go onto our side and do a side plank or a side bridge. Um, yeah, and then we'll work it out from there. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so to start with, just um, flatten and arch your lower back. So just add, exhale, drop the back, inhale, arch the back. Just rolling through that lower back. So the pelvis rolls on top of your legs and it's just a nice way to bring your attention to your lower back. How it feels today, if it feels creaky, crunchy. <laughs> and crunchy, it's not Friday. <laughs> And just noticing how it rolls. Does it feel that you're rolling more on one side of the pelvis than the other? Do you notice your lower back? Do you notice the back of your pelvis, the sacrum, and your tailbone? Can you notice it? Can you relax your toes when you're doing that? Can you relax your fingers and your jaw? And then rest in what feels like centre. And put your hands on your lower ribs and just breathe into your hands for a moment. So just to wake up this part of the body, bring your awareness to the breath coming from the ribs, expanding out to the sides. So it's not so much from the belly or from your chest. So you take away this feeling that your neck muscles are doing the work of your breathing or your back. Awareness of your diaphragm. Allow your chin to stay in a tucked position. So you feel that your chin is towards your throat. Uh, your chest is wide and your ribs are soft. And we're gonna go straight up into a bridge. So we're not gonna roll through, but we're just gonna allow the hips to go straight up to the ceiling and then to come straight back down. That's all there is to it. But if you use your feet to push the floor away, you'll find lifting your hips is a little bit easier. So you have less effort coming from the body, but more coming from the feet or from your spine, less effort. But allow your feet to help push the floor away. It's lifting and lowering. You might find one foot, you have more awareness of one foot than the other. You might find one foot feels heavier. <clears throat> you might have more strength in one foot than the other more connection. Keep the chin tucked towards your throat. Last one. Okay, so bring your feet and the knees together and roll over onto your right side. Here you go. And come up onto your elbow. So I'm on my right side, my left elbow is underneath my armpit and my knees are bent. So have your face in line with your chest. And you're going to take your arm up, left arm up to the ceiling and you're going to lift your hips up off the floor and you're going to stay there. So I'm going to come over to the side here so you can see what I'm doing and you're like that. And you're going to hold this for as long as you feel you can. If you need to come down at any point, you come down. I'm timing, I'm timing. Um, <laughs> I'm timing myself 
and you. So if you need to come down, rest. It's, make sure your shoulder is not taking over. That right shoulder isn't going up by your ear. This top pelvis isn't rotating forward. Your head isn't dropping forward. It's staying back. It's in line with your chest bone. If this arm starts to ache, bring it down. It can stay in front of you, but try not to roll that shoulder forward. And rest. Roll back onto your back, onto your spine. And uh, lift one foot and then lift the other foot. So bring your knees in fairly close towards you. They can be apart, your feet can be apart and your hands up to the ceiling. So one arm goes behind you and the opposite foot moves away from you. You come back to the center and you change sides. One arm moves away, the opposite foot goes down to the floor. Got itchy elbow. And then you change sides. So your movement with the arms and the legs depends on how stable the spine feels your brain is going to let you have more mobility in your shoulder and in your hip if it's happy that your spine is stable and your pelvis is stable. So you've got a heaviness in the back of your pelvis and your spine feels heavy. The middle of your back feels heavy. Your chin is towards your throat, it's tucked and your chest is open and wide and you're not holding your breath. So you don't have to touch the floor with your toes. If you can reach the floor, go ahead. But if that means that you start to lose that connection with the floor, your spine starts to lift off the floor, then don't go to the floor with your toes. Only halfway is fine. Totally fine. Because this is all about stabilizing your spine and your pelvis. It's not about your arms and your legs. Okay, if you can do one more on each side, go ahead. If not, just hug your knees in and rest. And when you're ready to finish, bring one foot down at a time. And then roll yourself over onto your left side. Whee! And come up onto your left elbow. So I'm going to turn around so you can see me. You can stay where you are. Your other arm's going to come up towards the ceiling. And you're going to lift your hips. One side is going to be easier than the other. I'm telling you now. <laughs> Always, because maybe you sit in a certain twisted way. <laughs> Maybe you sit cross-legged in a certain way. Um, if you've had any injuries or accidents or surgeries in your body at any time in your life, let's face it, who hasn't? There's something, always something going on. Then uh, one side of your spine and your abdominals, your back muscles will be stronger than the other side and also your shoulder as well. So try not to sink into this shoulder. You can rest any time you need to. You don't have to stay up here as long as I'm attempting to. You can just sit there and laugh at me. <laughs> Smell Joe, she's crazy. <laughs> oh, and then come down and rest. <laughs> so we build it up over the weeks. We're building up the strength of our shoulders and our abdominals and everything else, our spine, to hold that position. And um, we're aiming for 60 to 90 seconds. And who knows, it could take six months to get there. It could take a year. Who cares? <laughs> Okay, so come over onto your um, child's pose. Come over into child's pose. Because we're going to do a little moving child's pose. So your hands are going to go out in front of you oh, as far as they can go. Drop your chin to the floor and then come up onto your hands and take your nose forward of your fingers and then go back to child's pose. Come forwards. And go back to child's pose. Come forwards and go back to child's pose. Come forwards and go back to child's pose. So when you go back to child's pose, your sit bones are going towards your heels. When you go forwards, your nose goes as far forward as you feel you can take it. In the middle of your hands. In front, going towards the front of your hands, towards the front of your mat, if you're on a mat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Last one. And then roll yourself back over onto your spine, because we're going to go back into a bridge. 
So if you've got a set of little weights and they're handy, you can use these in the bridge. If not, you don't need them. It's not a necessity. It just uh, allows a little bit more heaviness for your glutes to contend with. So push your feet into the floor, lift your hips up and come straight back down. Pushing the feet into the floor, lift the hips. So check what your head's doing. What is your chin and your jaw doing? Are they staying close to your chest? or close to your throat so you're not looking behind you so you're not um, tightening up your neck pushing the feet into the floor so you've got that pressure underneath the ball of the big toe the little toe and your heel uh -huh. making that connection with your feet to the back of the body because of the back line of fascia as i was talking about at the beginning of the class and that anatomy trains book runs down the back of the head, down your spine, down your pelvis, down your hamstrings, down the calf and underneath your feet. So what happens in the foot affects your back and affects your neck. Oh. Anyway, that's enough, I think. Enough of those. <laughs> so roll back over onto your right side. Let your knees fall over, let your hand come over, push yourself up onto your elbow. If you're facing in line with the rest of your chest and lift your hips so you're in that half position I should turn around so you can see me hand can come up here if you want to or onto your shoulder to check that your shoulder isn't hiking up by your ear or it can be in front of you here so if we haven't even done this much before five or ten seconds is really going to be enough <coughs> for your um, obliques <coughs> your back muscles to stay here so rest and then you can come back into it you can rest and then come back for a few seconds and rest and come back for a few seconds or just rest okay so i've been doing this for a while so i feel like it's a i could hang out here for a bit longer <laughs> but i don't want to it's, if it becomes an effort that's when you stop when you're forcing it okay rest come and lie on your back <sighs> let your spine rest for a moment <clears throat> Notice the heaviness in the back of the body, so your ribs are down and you've got heaviness in the back of your pelvis. And then take the hands up to the ceiling, bring up one foot so the knee comes in towards you and bring up the other foot so the knee comes in towards you. So one arm goes back behind you, one foot goes down, change sides. Now if you've been doing this for a while and if you want to make it more challenging, then you straighten the legs. You move with straight legs. Now, if that feels like too much, if you're trying that, you think, oh, I should be able to do that. <laughs> stay with your bent knees, less effort. Chin stays towards your throat, so you're not holding your breath. You're not clenching your jaw. Keep a softness around the face and around your throat. You feel that you should be able to sing a song <laughs> while you're doing it. La 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 la, la 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 la. Whatever, I can't think of a song today. There's no song in my head this morning. Maybe a good thing, sometimes they can be annoying. <laughs> One more on each side if you feel like it, otherwise hug your knees in towards your chest. And then bring your feet down one at a time and roll yourself over onto your left side. Bending your knees when you get there, coming up onto your elbow. I shall turn around so you can see. And you can always make this more challenging if you've got a weight, you hold it up to the ceiling and then you lift your hips. Whew. But more importantly, just check that you're not feeling that you're holding your breath or your shoulders are not by your ears, you're not clenching your jaw, you're not tightening your face, you don't feel like it's so <clears throat> to be here. Now this isn't CrossFit <laughs> or anything like that. So let go of any tightness in your pelvis. So if you're tucking your tailbone underneath you, you'd be squeezing and tightening your rear pelvic floor. You don't want to do that. Can that switch off abdominal muscles and tighten up your back and all sorts of things. Put pressure on your discs and your sacrum. La la la. La la la. La la la. La la la. Just hanging out here with the crew on a Monday. Do 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 do. We are the A team. <laughs> and then come back down. 
go into child's pose. Take your hands out. Press into your hands and then come up onto your hands so the nose goes forward of your fingers and then go back into child's pose. Forwards and backwards. So a moving child's pose helps to open up the hips because your feet toes are together, your knees are apart. But also, it's really good for the vestibular system, your brain, your mind. So the vestibular system is your balance. Your balance system. I'm working with your balance. I'm improving your balance by doing this. No extra charge for not falling over in the street and breaking your bones. last one and then we'll roll over onto our backs for the last round of the shoulder bridge okay so wherever you go onto your spine using your weights if you want to pressing your feet into the floor as you lift your hips and come back down just lifting and lowering Chin stays tucked, so your gaze is towards your knees because your chin is close to your throat, fusing the floor, pushing your feet into the floor. I've lost count. <laughs> always lose count. <laughs> always, always. I think we've got one more to go. <laughs> You'll play it back and watch it. Say, where did I? <laughs> so roll over onto your right side, <laughs> bend your knees, and come up onto your elbow. So the rollers are going to come crushing down because you did two less reps or two more reps. <laughs> the elbow underneath your armpit, lift your hips up to that side plank position. So let your neck lengthen away or your crown of your head. Think about somebody pulling a little bit of your hair from the top of your head away from your spine. Arm can be up to the ceiling or on the floor, but don't let your top shoulder roll forward. <clears throat> the idea is that your shoulders and your collarbone are facing forward and your hip bones are facing forward and you're pushing the floor away with your right arm. Remember you can come down at any time. You don't have to stay up here all the time. <laughs> Maybe for about 30 seconds. And then come down onto your back again. Just rolling back over onto your spine. Noticing your spine for a moment. Take the arms back up to the ceiling. Notice your shoulder blades. Dropping the chin. Pick up one foot. Pick up the other foot. So one foot goes down and the opposite arm goes back. Come back to centre. Change sides. And remember, if you want to make it more challenging, you straighten the legs. But you don't have to do that. Remember, if you've been doing this since we started in March, <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> We've been doing this when we started. We were doing it five times a week. Yes, five times a week. Wow, eight. And now we're down to three. Three times a week. So your body gets a rest in between. So I'm going to get back into the bent knees. I feel that I was straining too much in my face and in my neck. So I can do one more on each side, but rest if you need to, yes. Rest any time. And then let one foot come down at a time to the floor and roll yourself over onto your left side. Oh, a nice easy roll. Use your hands to push you up onto your left elbow. I'm going to come around this side. You can use a weight if you want to. <laughs> and you're going to lift your hips and you're going to breathe. You can see it's just a side bridge or a side plank. Plank is just like a word that I don't like very much. It's uh, Makes me think of something that's rigid. So your body is doing 
It's always moving in, in the plank. You're breathing. Yeah. Your chest is moving, your belly is moving in and out as you breathe. You're not tightening anything. You're not holding on to any tightness around your pelvic floor or your jaw or your shoulders. Less effort. And you rest, that's why you rest when you need to rest. Less effort. La 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 la. I'm all about less effort. That's me. <laughs> okay. Child's pose. And reaching forward with your hands. Oh, lovely. So come up with your nose forward of your fingers and go back into child's pose. So just that gentle move forwards and backwards as if you're drawing a line with your nose. So try and match it with your breath so you're not holding your breath. So breathe in as you come forwards and breathe out as you go back. Piece of hair, that's driving me nuts, go away. It's falling in front of my face. Breathe in as you come forwards, breathe out as you go back. And take your time, go at a pace that feels comfortable for you, that you can feel where you're moving from. You can feel the pressure on your hands. You can feel that your sit bones are moving back to your heels when you go back. Last one. Hey, and then let's see here on our hands for a moment. Come up onto your hands and knees and do a cat stretch. So let's uh, let's do a cat stretch. I'm going to come over to my side so you can see that the pelvis tucks under and then you drop the head. And then the pelvis lifts and you lift your head. And the pelvis tucks under and then you drop the head. And the pelvis lifts and you lift your head. So you're just working through that lovely movement of the pelvis on top of the legs and your head and your neck finding that connection with your shoulders with the chest bone so notice when your shoulder blades hug your spine your chest bone lifts and when your shoulder blades move away from the spine your chest bone lifts up between your shoulder blades so you get that seesawing movement that connection with your sternum and your chest bone Two more. So we're going to finish with a little simple cross crawl. So pick up your right hand and pick up your left knee and let your right hand come across and touch your left knee and take them back to the floor. Pick up your left hand, pick up your right knee and let your hand come across and touch the knee and put them back on the floor. Right hand, left knee comes across to touch the left knee Put them back, left hand, right knee, lift, let them touch, put them back. So do a couple more on each side, just notice if there's one side that feels trickier than the other. Nice easy little cross crawl. And then push yourself up onto your knees. See if you can bring this foot forward. Can you lift and lower that foot? Put that foil over. And see if you can bring this hand over. Touch the knee. Touch the knee. Touch the knee. Touch the knee. Change feet. Hold on to anything if you need to. Yes, if you've got anything nearby, a chair, sofa, whatever room you're in, bedroom. And then see if this hand already comes across. Can it touch your knee? Does it feel different to the other side? Mine does. This side's much harder. the top of your hip bones so your thumbs are on your lower rib cage lower ribs breathe into your thumbs and then put your 
your right hand on your where about your where about your bra line is and the left hand up there on your chest bone and notice the space between your hands as you breathe for a moment. If it's uncomfortable being in this position, you can sit back if you want to, or you can come up to standing if you want to. It's just easy because we're in this position, you don't have to do it in this position at all. Just be comfortable. This is one of the hand positions that helps calm the nervous system. here that's underneath, slide it across to the ribs, practically underneath your armpit so it goes up a little bit and the top hand comes across and just holds onto that arm gently, You're not grabbing it, it's just a gentle hug and then just breathe. This is uh, this one or this one, either, either position with your arms. It's one to remember when you're feeling a bit, a bit scratchy or a bit frustrated, angry, worried, fearful, and calming down the nervous system. I like this one particularly. This is one of my favourites. I quite like this here, it's nice. Holding on there, it's quite nice, that hug. All that pressure, that gentle, and the softness and the warmth from the hand on the ribs. It's all about taking you out of that worrying, scratchy mind and bringing you back to being present, rather in that worrying, um, forward thinking brain, future thinking. There you go, that's it. Shake out your hands. Lovely. And use whatever you need to use to get up to standing. If you can, put your foot forwards and tuck your toes under of the back foot and come up without your hands, do that. If not, then hold on to something to help you come up and come up when you're ready to come up. So you might feel like, oh, I just want to rest here for a moment. Well, I'll go back on the mat and rest on your back for a moment. <laughs> that's fine with me. <laughs> you know what you've got coming up, what's happening in your day. So look after yourself, have a good day. We're back here on Wednesday. Do, 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 do. If I don't see you before, I should see you Wednesday morning, but I think we're doing standing stuff on Wednesday. Love you loads.